Hi everyone, my name is Jessica Vaslin. I'm the Marketing Manager here at DACI, and I'd like to welcome you to today's presentation, Track the Pulse of Your Business with Real-Time Operational Dashboards in SharePoint. So before we get started, I'm just going to go ahead and review a few logistics. First, we are recording today's presentation, so we will make the recording and the slides available on DACI.com a little later today. And then second, we do try to encourage an open communication line. Everyone is muted on the line, but if you do have questions, feel free to type them in the chat window in the lower right-hand corner of your screen. We'll do our best to answer them throughout the presentation, and then time permitting, we'll have an open Q&A. So let's go ahead and get started. So we'll start with a little background about DACI. DACI is the leading solution provider of real-time operational intelligence. DACI has been around since 2008 or 2002, I'm sorry, and is globally deployed to many large enterprises and government agencies. Um, you can see many of our notable customers on the right side of the screen. Most recently, we scored a notable mention in Spartner's BI Magic Quadrant for BI platforms. Um, some of the notable mentions, our customers claim that some of Presto's best attributes involve data access, integration capabilities, and ease of use, indicating that our product is best used to develop easy-to-use apps for business users. So we'll be talking about some of those use cases a little, a little later in the presentation. Today's special guest is John Krupe. John is Jackie's Chief Technology Officer. In John's past life, he was formerly the CTO of Sun Solar Practice and a Sun Distinguished Engineer. John is also the co-author of Core J2E Patterns, is a well-known speaker, writer, and blogger, and a two-time Washingtonian tech titan. So today, during our presentation, we'll be covering, um, starting with, uh, why the SharePoint adoption rates continue to climb. These adoption rates continue to climb, but unfortunately with some deployment challenges, so we'll be reviewing some of those. We'll talk about how organizations are using SharePoint today. Um, we'll talk about the decision window, how it's shrinking, and how SharePoint is moving towards delivering this real-time operational intelligence environment. We'll highlight our product, Zachary Presto, and how it makes complex information easy to understand in three easy steps. And then we'll conclude with how our customers are leveraging SharePoint to solve their operational challenges. So I'll go ahead and hand it off to John. Great. Thanks, Jess, and thanks, everyone, for coming. First, we want to uh, ask you a question. We're going to put up a poll here. And because much about operational intelligence, especially in dashboards, is around information, we want to hear from you, where are you getting the data that you use uh, in SharePoint today? And how are you using SharePoint? Are you using it for content management? more of a collaboration suite or a BI platform or solution portal where you're actually building your solutions, uh, your new solutions in it as a portal or some other use. Uh, maybe the other use might be corporate portal or just basically a, a place to store information. So we have about 40% voted. As soon as we're done, we'll display the results and then uh, we'll use that to gauge in how we present the rest of the presentation. So it looks at almost done here, about a little over halfway. And it's uh, coming up even here between uh, content management. Well, now content management is moving forward. And we have a bunch of others. Okay, so in about 10 seconds, we'll conclude this. Okay, great. All right, so the results here. 55% uh, content management, and this is definitely what we're hearing. Uh, it's so easy to put content into SharePoint that it makes it makes a lot of sense. But that collaboration suite is, is really big, and it, it's one of the ways in which uh, not only are you sharing information, but we believe it's the way that you'll be building and sharing apps and dashboards, and collaboration is one of the key tenants for not just design and development of, of enterprise apps and operational dashboards, but also key to how you build and share and deploy applications. All right, so let's let's start talking about what's driving the growth, the growing use of SharePoint. And there's a whole bunch of factors that are coming out now that are, are definitely things that are timely, both from an environmental perspective and an organizational perspective. But it, a lot of it is around the, these four elements, the decision time, is shrinking, and we'll talk more about that. You don't have as much time to make decisions as you used to. There's less IT available to help you do uh, a lot of the things that you're doing. When you say that you're using SharePoint for collaboration, a lot of the collaboration you're doing was really only accomplished with custom application years ago that was developed by IT. So you're able to co collaborate more, but you have less IT available to you. And the data sources that 
are increasing dramatically. And ultimately, we want to get closer to self-service. So if that's the key, those are the key ingredients, what are some of the other forces that are driving the use? Well, we have a really technically savvy workforce. So this workforce that we now have in place in the 20-year-olds and 30-year-olds are used to doing things in browsers and doing a lot of things themselves. Collaboration, as you just saw, is key. We, not, we don't build things alone. We don't use things alone. We build things in groups. And the technology is really advancing. The things we're able to do in the browser and on our mobile devices, you know, now we, we dreamed of doing just a few years ago. So technology is finally catching up to the capabilities and needs that we have. Well, this is it's pretty amazing if you think about it. For an enterprise software platform, the adoption is really skyrocketing when it comes to SharePoint. So many organizations, especially in enterprise software, they don't upgrade as often as, as they would like and, and definitely don't get the latest and greatest. But if you look at this SharePoint 2007 and 2010, look at how fast 2010 is coming up there. With 65 and 57 percent, that's the majority of SharePoint. That means that customers are upgrading because they want the collaboration capabilities. They want the ability to be able to build their own pages and build their own dashboards. They want more of the self-service. So it's definitely increasing at a dramatic rate. But there's some challenges. Uh, only 59% are able to deploy SharePoint at the pace they expected. Well, some of SharePoint is, is extremely easy to just get up and running, and some of it is harder to do. And as with anything else, the more you want to do, uh, the, the harder potentially it, it becomes if you don't have the right tools and capabilities. So 41% of the challenge uh, implementation schedules we see below, most of them are due to technical issues. Either we can't connect to things or we don't have the right capabilities. A lot of what we'll talk about today is about connecting into many other systems. And when you connect into those, those are not just uh, architectural problems, those are technical problems in being able to get the information together and to do it in a secure way. So being able to look at governance and look at technical issues and reducing the, that slowdown is part of what we'll be talking about today. We like this report here. This is from Global 360. So this is their SharePoint in the enterprise. It's uh, the end of 2010. So it, it is a, it's about a year and a half old, but it's really still important. And look at the use. This is very consistent with what you told us, that a majority of the use is through portal and web content. Uh, and that portal content is key because things are really being centered more around the line of business way of delivering. And look at, look at custom applications. So as we've always wanted in the past with portals, we've been promised for many, many years that we wanted to build applications, smaller applications, and run them in the portal. We really didn't have that uh, desire uh, manifested. We really desi uh, got most of the content management, and, and portals became a dump of dumping ground of information. Now that we can use newer technologies such as SharePoint, we can actually build custom applications, and not only have IT or developers build them, but actually we could have a lot of self-service building applications. So it makes a lot of sense that it's fastest growing. We also have another, uh, another statistic that we want to show. Okay, we're getting a little delay on the, on the web here. Okay, now what's the cost? Uh, and what's, the, what's consuming all the time here? Well, part of this is really coming from uh, the access to information. How are you trying to access other information inside of your SharePoint? Now, this is uh, interesting here is that look at 31% of the data is coming through a separate native interface. This, this is highly custom work that's being done. That's a really, really hard, uh, high amount. But look at that external data that isn't available. Does it mean that it's not there? No, this means that it's not available to the SharePoint users. That's a whopping 41%. So this is not only just showing a need, but it's also showing the challenges is that this information is required to get into the types of solutions you're building in SharePoint, and it's not available, then there's definitely a problem. So what we're trying to do is combat that problem and have the ease of being able to connect it to this information and get it built into your solutions. Well, you hear a lot 
lot about this decision window decreasing. And things that we were able to wait for, say, you know, months or, or many months before started uh, decreasing, and we needed that information weekly. So many of us out there are used to looking at KPIs that maybe every three months was good enough, and then it went down to, uh, to maybe a few weeks. Well, now it's getting down to I need this information now. And I don't just need it now because I'd like it now. I need it now because I need to make decisions now. Think of things like cybersecurity. This is one of our favorites because you know, just a few years ago, you could look at your KPIs on cybersecurity in organizations and how you're doing. And every three months, you can read, you can look at the KPIs and understand your scorecards and how you're doing. Uh, but then realize that we were, as a tax crew, and we were being infiltrated more often that we weren't able to wait that long. And then it went into weeks. And getting it down to weeks was a, 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 a huge effort because we had to have a team of people collecting the information. And now we need to understand the, uh, the cyber threats now as they're happening. Or data centers. We need to understand when there's outages or when there's network performance issues. So everything is moving into now. Do we need to know up to the second? No, but maybe up uh, to the minute or every 15 minutes. That's what we're talking about when the decision window is decreasing to needing to have the latest information. So this is really about real-time operational intelligence here. Now, uh, uh, real-time is about getting the freshest information. It's getting information as it's happening. Whenever we're talking about informational intelligence or an operational intelligence, especially in the form of dashboards, which is how this information comes out, we're talking about information that's coming from many different places. And the reason why this is so popular in SharePoint is because it makes it so easy for you to, to produce these dashboards, to get information connected to the dashboards, to share this and collaborate around this information, and really have it as a collaboration and building environment. But that live and connected information is really coming from three major areas now. Uh, the inside information, so SharePoint isn't just a collaboration portal and content management, it has the ability to store information. Many of us use lists out there, and lists are really this high-powered form of, you know, either departmental or user databases that you can store a tremendous amount of information in. So organizations are using this, especially line of business, to store key uh, important critical information. Also, SQL Server as is built into, into SharePoint. Being able to get information into that, and then NewsGator and, and news information. All these things are highly integrated and a place that we get information, store information inside SharePoint. What about all that outside information? What about that 41% that we can't get of external information that we need in operational dashboards, whether it's SAP, ERP, uh, PeopleSoft, or all the data warehouses that we have out there? And now social media. How do I get Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn integrated into my dashboards? All this is becoming a common request for getting this operational picture. This is how organizations run. They need to be able to look at information from all different parts of the organization with information internal and external, and now to be able to get social media. Well, as you can imagine, if we need to have this live and connected and to have it all in SharePoint, it takes quite a bit of effort to do it from a traditional development and integration perspective. So we're going to show you how to decrease that amount of time dramatically and how to use the tooling so that you can get this information quickly into your SharePoint environment. What does it really mean when you're talking about SharePoint? Well, when we talk about real-time operational dashboards, we're talking about dashboards that are made up of web parts. So if you're a SharePoint user or you're a SharePoint developer, you understand web parts are really those windows of information. These are really small apps that are running. And there's uh, excellent support inside SharePoint. Matter of fact, everything you do from a perspective of SharePoint in terms of user interfaces and applications are web parts. So to be able to have not just web parts as individual applications, but being able to put the web parts together and have them as dashboards, and those things are being driven by all that information that you have. So SharePoint is really this platform that you work in and you, and you have the apps and the web parts and the dashboards, but behind the scenes, by using a technology such as Presto, you can mash up this information from all these different sources. And the mashing up is really the mashing up of data. So part of the whole self-service uh, 
direction and target and mashups is about being able to do things a lot faster and leverage the SharePoint platform that you already have. Here's a nice report that came out of Aberdeen uh, last year about operational BI. It really enables that complete picture. So this operational dashboards or operational intelligence dashboards really are giving you a full picture of your business in different areas of your business. Now, if you look at it down, I like this quote from the marketing director that talked about how they had some of the data in a data warehouse, but they needed a complete information of customer behavior. So they looked at the behaviors, they looked at product penetration, revenue leakage, profitability. All this data is in different systems, and sometimes it's spread across multiple systems. So to be able to get a complete picture means that they need to get data from many different systems in front of them. Well, you could try to put it into a data warehouse, which it looks like they did, but that's never a recipe for success because it wasn't the, the data warehouses weren't designed for that. Plus, data is moving uh, very often, and data warehouses really aren't designed to be real time or live in nature. Excellent at storing historical information, which is part of the dashboard, but really not designed to be a place where you're pushing real time information through. So, looking at operational BI as the best in class being the highest here is showing you that we need to start looking at different technologies to augment your BI portfolio. That's where really operational BI, as Aberdeen calls it, a real-time operational intelligence comes in. Now, what do business users really want here? Well, they really want these real-time operational dashboards. So we want to show you what this looks like, and we want to give you some insight into um, what this is going to what this is going to give you. But first, we want to have another poll here, and we want to see the types of information where you're getting information from for your uh, the types of dashboard you're building. So let's uh, let's start um, let's put this poll up here, and it's for the types of dashboard you're building. Where is the data? Are you using mostly information that's within SharePoint, things like SharePoint lists, uh, your um, SQL Server? Are you using information that's outside, as we talked before? It could be anything from operational systems to CRMs to ERPs uh, and social media. And if, uh, if you're in line with most of our customers, it's really a combination of both. And that combination of both, as many of you can attest to, is a lot of work to do. And it's not easy, as many of us would think. Because whenever you're crossing multiple systems, you're crossing security boundaries, you have to deal with single sign-on. To make that a seamless experience so that you have this beautiful dashboard in front of you is quite an effort. OK, so let's close this out and see what we have. Well, you know, as suspected, uh, you know, portion of that is inside, a portion is outside, and then the majority is both. And that's good that we have, uh, there's none coming in with other, because we really couldn't think of what other would be, but we just gave you that fourth option. So that's purely in line with the problem that we're solving today. The problem that we're really solving is that these operational issues require information from all over the place, and that, that all over the place is increasing at a dramatic pace. Now we want to hand it over to John O'Brien, our super sales engineer, who's going to show us an example of what an operational real-time dashboard looks like in SharePoint. And this is called Perishable Goods Demo. And John, why don't you tell us a little bit about what problem this, uh, this dashboard is solving? Sure, John. This is for a company that, that uh, makes and ships uh, caviar. So it has, to be kept, um, it has to be kept at the appropriate temperature all the way through. Now, the operational folks who schedule and arrange these, these shipments take the orders. And, and before they had this dashboard, they had to see multiple systems and pieces of paper from different areas. So now they have this all in one place. So they can schedule these shipments and get the right, the right um, logistics in place to get it there uh, on time and in the right condition. So, so we heard that they wanted to be able to do things a lot faster because although they had the information, they were putting in a spreadsheet and they were on the phone a lot asking others. And they wanted a dashboard, gave them a complete view of everything going on. But not just the dashboard where they're looking at information, they actually wanted to have a dashboard where they can go and change and schedule the, uh, the types of deliveries, correct? Right, and that's one of the key things, operational dashboards, not just pulling a few numbers from a data source, but they able to 
pull it in, combine it, and push it back. And a lot of uh, analysts are calling this more actionable intelligence, where you're not just looking at pretty pictures and clicking around and moving things. You're actually able to push information back and make decisions and impact the information that you're looking at. Okay, so let's see. We uh, a whole bunch of pending orders we have there, and that uh, that shows that this is from Dynamics Online CRM. So this is pulling from our CRM system that's online, correct? It is. The top left um, widget or box is pulling uh, data from CRM and things that uh, customers have orders we need to to arrange for. And when I I select one, the the box just to the right of that one shows the details. So if I need to go in and and update some information, I can do that all in one place. I don't need to log in somewhere else and simply make sure we have the right phone number and address and push that back and get that updated into, into CRM. And each of these are individual apps, correct? That these are, um, these are all individual apps that were, uh, we've heard that they were being used for, you know, sort of one-off solutions, and what they wanted to do was to have these apps put together in a dashboard that's somehow connected. Exactly. So the, the, the map on the right is coming from uh, an outside source, a Bing mapping service to plot all the turn-by-turn -turn directions and even some information about fuel availability. And the weather forecast is, is coming from a different outside web service. And we've got data from a, a Presto or Jackie mashup. And the, on the bottom left, you'll note this is coming from inside. This is a SharePoint list that the people who manage the trucks update on their SharePoint site. So we can make sure we get the right recommendation about whether we need refrigeration to uh, get that caviar there without going bad. So the, the operator, or the logistics uh, manager, can select the appropriate truck, and it'll pull up the, the fuel cost and the surcharge as necessary. It can simply confirm that write that back to the system that scheduled these deliveries. Now that's going and getting, calculating the distance and calculating the fuel prices that's actually getting off the off the web, right? Right. So this is data pulling from outside. It's not available inside. It saves the operator looking that up by hand or trying to manage it with other systems. All in one place, uh, live and connected. And this is part of the, the, the rising fuel costs, too. They wanted to be able to react uh, faster and also have better insight into fuel because they didn't have to worry much about fuel, you know, maybe five, ten years ago. The fuel cost is much, but then as as it's so uh, key to their their operational expenses, they need to be able to calculate and potentially select the route that may be longer but may have a, a less fuel cost. Right, and putting this all in one place with the calculations here and all the data allows them to get these things scheduled quickly, but get it priced and surcharged right, so they don't lose money or overcharge their customers. Okay, so it sounds like this was uh, it put together pretty easily. Uh, how long did this take about? This was, well, the whole thing with all the apps and together deployed in SharePoint about a week. Okay, great. Great. And so as you, and if they want more information from other systems, they essentially are able to drop the apps into SharePoint here and then just have somehow connect it up, which you'll show us later. Exactly. Okay, great. Great, thanks. Okay, so let's uh, let's continue on here, and um, we're going to go um, talk a few more uh, a few more slides, and then we're going to show you a deep dive into how do you build these dashboards and how do these dashboards actually uh, land inside SharePoint. Something to note here is that there's a portability side of all this too. So everything you're seeing in SharePoint here. Uh, is leveraging off the capabilities that you have in SharePoint, but we'll talk about it in a little while, that everything you're building, uh, you, you may, you're also able to use outside of SharePoint, too. So the apps are all portable, uh, and they're not just uh, only designed for SharePoint, but they leverage that, that web part infrastructure underneath. Well, part of being able to do this is, is really about the speed. And what we, our customers have told us and why our platform is successful is because we're able to take the integration effort out of connecting into all those external systems. So if you think about the flow and when you have the architecture of SharePoint, and SharePoint is really the control in all of this. If you're using the apps and the dashboards within SharePoint uh, and those apps are connecting into the data, then you really, are, you really are talking about moving data back and forth through SharePoint. Well, you have to be able to do that in an easy way 
And you also have to be able to reduce the amount of time it takes in order to build these platforms. So that means that we want to reduce and take out all the effort in development by just pointing and clicking and connecting into the data sources. So once we do that, this is really about getting the dashboards. Now, we talk a lot about apps and we talk about dashboards. And of course, Apple has really done a great job in making apps popular. You could just think about apps as each of those little windows which do one or two things. And that's really the key element here. Dashboards, especially in the enterprise, really are a bunch of apps, individual apps that are looking at a source of information. Sometimes it's looking at uh, performance information, KPIs, and metrics. Sometimes it's looking at sales inventory. I mean, it runs the gamut. And sometimes it's just showing textual information or showing visualization. But ultimately, the, the reason why we use dashboards is because we want to be able to look at information and a whole bunch of disparate information. The real-time nature means that we're connected into the live sources of information, but the apps that we put together in a dashboard are really portable. And this is the key. You want to be able to do things that leverage the infrastructure of SharePoint with web parts, but what you don't want to do is you don't want to lock yourself into that. We have two other big platforms that are increasingly popular, the portal platforms and the mobile platforms. So you want to be able to have any dashboard you're using within SharePoint to be able to be used outside of SharePoint. The same dashboard should be able to be used in your mobile device, whether it's a tablet or a smartphone, and you should have the exact same information and the, the exact freshness of the information. So think about that whenever you're choosing a vendor, is that you choose a vendor that has a concept of portable dashboards. Well, how do you do this? Well, we like to get it down to three easy steps. You want to connect into the data source. So as we said, this is a combination of point, click, and connect. Now, as you think about it, and as many of you are within the IT organization or talk to the IT organization, there's always the concept of security and governance. So there's different personas or different users in an organization that are typically responsible for building these. And when it talks about connecting into systems, your IT organization may control the security and governance of you connecting into your ERP or your data warehouse, VRM, uh, HR application. So they may be the ones registering or connecting it into the system, and, you, and it's made available to you, and it has all the security and governance of single sign-on and authentication that's required of, for your credentials. But then the real key here is, well, how do I get from all the data sources that may be registered by IT or registered by me or, or developers in my group? How do I take that information, get it in the form that I need to visualize it? And that's where mashups come in. So you've heard the term mashups probably uh, talking about uh, putting information together and disparate information. It makes so much sense when it comes to dashboards because dashboards are really a set of different individual disparate sources of information being put together in context. Well, if you're taking data from all these uh, enterprise systems and internal and external social media, you can imagine that there's a lot of data there that you don't need or needs to be transformed or somehow connected. So instead of asking developers and, and even power users to write code to try to integrate it all, why not just mash it up? Why not visually mash it up? And the idea is you're mashing up the information so that you all you have to do is be familiar with the app, uh, information and you can mash it up using our, our technology called Wires in a Browser and get that information you need to visualize it. And that visualization, as we said, is a form of apps and dashboards. So you see an example on your right, and you'll see more and more of this information. And we actually believe that the visualization is key here. And the prettier it looks, the more aesthetic it looks, the more, uh, the more open users are to using it. And this isn't just a, an analytic tool anymore. It's actually becoming a big part of presentation of information, not only internally, but also to your customers and partners. All right, so now what we want to do is we want to start digging in. And we want to dig into actually how is this developed and how is this done. So we want to show you a, an application called LiveBy. And uh, this is modeled off a, a customer application. And really what they wanted is they, they had a CRM system where they had their customers and wanted, in, wanted to introduce an innovative way of having a connection with their customers in the call center, but not just uh, 
have orders coming in, but create a relationship with that customer. So as they're talking to the customer, they have a complete insight into not only the customer's buying pattern, but their interests. But a big part of this is how customers purchase and they return. Uh, as many of you know, whenever you buy anything off the web, uh, many of the companies out there, Zappos and, uh, and Amazon, they allow you to return things. They have either free shipping or free returns. So a lot of people buy things and return them, and this is part of an overall buying style now. Well, if we want to look at how customers are buying things and their interests in different categories, we also want them to be able to almost name their own price. So this company wanted to be able to take the information that they have from the customer while they're online with the customer and, uh, and suggest different things that the customer is looking for and also look at things such as social deals that are out there or competitor information and, and empower the call center sales operators to be able to set the price based on all this information. Well, as you can imagine, there was no way that they had it all in one system. They wanted to be able to connect into this different information. And quite frankly, they wanted to be able to have these dashboards built custom so that they can drag it out and add new information to have a wider view of that customer and their buying profile. So we call this live buy, and now we're going to switch back to John, and he's going to show you uh, what this looks like. First, we're going to start in Mashboard, which is a part of Presto, which shows you how easy it is to build dashboards and how easy it is to wire them up and to get them inside of SharePoint. So Mashboard, John, is what? Tell us, describe what Mashboard is. This is a tool for building or mashing together dashboards. So as you said, apps are very popular and, and Presto is great at allowing you to connect apps to tap into data from multiple sources or inside or outside, and different users are going to want to see that arranged in different ways. So this is an easy drag and drop, point and click way to build a dashboard with just the apps that a user needs. And this is built, this part of the platform actually evolved out of customers asking us for a collaborative way to be able to uh, build apps and build dashboards and share them within their organization. So everything we're seeing here is really sort of blurring the lines before between developing something and sharing apps and dashboards, right? That's right. As you'll see on, on the left in this area, I've got the popular apps or my favorite apps I might want to put in a dashboard, things that I've built or other people have built that I just want to uh, reuse. And this is just running in a browser, so there's no download, there's no install, there's none of that. It's all just running in the browser. Which is great. I don't need to get IT to help me install something. So to put a new, I've got a couple apps on this dashboard. To put a new one on, I simply drag and drop uh, an app that I've built or someone else has built and, and fit it right in a spot where I want. And you're actually showing us some of the individual apps that we'll see connected together in, a, in the Live by Dashboard. Exactly. Pulling data that you, you pointed out from web scraping or web APIs or some of my internal data warehouse metrics calculations. And with a few uh, clicks and drags, I've, I can have a whole dashboard that has, um, that has some KPIs shown as graphs and charts and uh, the list information listed about my competitors' offerings and social deals I pulled off the website um, and, and information about the, the um, related items that my customer, I'm talking to my customer about buying. So a dashboard really when we're building is a set of apps and they're, I see you can organize them by different tabs and mm -hmm. so you can just drag these things out. But then once I have the apps here, uh, tell me about, so how are they actually connected together? Because they're all coming from different sources right. and some of these are just giving me good enough information individually, uh, but ultimately this dashboard I want to connect them up. So how, how is that done? Well, that's true, because having the data in one place is good, but having them interact and connect is, e is even better, and that's easily done with another point-and-click drag-and-drop. We've got a, a wizard here that allows you to see how all these applications might interact. So if I select an item on one, I simply um, say, when, this, when I click on something in this app, it, it filters another app, or refreshes or shows something. So it's, it, it's it's very easy here with an animated drag and drop tool to add whatever wiring I need because different people may want them to connect in different ways. So really what this is doing, this is automating. If I were to use each of these individual, I can put in the information and then go search. 
What this is allowing me to do is put it in one place and then have that trigger information being sent to the other apps so that the apps can go and get their information. All of a sudden, one app or multiple apps are, are triggering information, updates, and all the others. Exactly. So uh, making it, although they're from separate sources and sep maybe separate people made the app, they can all work together as one in this dashboard. Right. So now that I have an app, so I have all these apps and I have this, you see, workspace. This is saved out. What do you do here to get this into LiveBot? You save it out as a as an app? Well, this is, so this isn't, this is a combined app. So this is a dashboard, but Presto sees it as an app. And to get this into SharePoint, we'll, uh, we'll go to that now. Let me open up uh, a SharePoint instance. And I've just got a SharePoint page. And if I want to go ahead and um, take advantage of the web part. See, um, Presto has a web part, a native web part. So if I simply want to add a web part to a page. Well, let me interject here. So I see Mashup Sites for SharePoint, which is the Share Presto SharePoint add-on. Mm -hmm. And this is this is a add-on into SharePoint so that it connects into Presto and will give me all the apps that are built and dashboards in Presto and all the data and Mashup data too, right? Right. And so that handles all the, the, the stuff behind the scenes. So now it's just like adding any other web part into uh, that you're that you're used to doing in SharePoint. And that mashup web part, I assume, is the data part. And the app web part is the visualization that you could throw in. Right. And so, yeah, why don't you show us now, if I go to add a web part that's coming from Presto, uh, what do I have? Well, it puts a web part in here. And as you can see, it's got all the, the properties and features of a regular web part. I can you know, set the title, and I can do things like, um, you know, figure how much space I want it to have, or set other layout or advanced options. And then to get the, um, to take advantage of that connection into, into Presto, I simply publish, use the publish option, and, and, that, and that web part goes out and finds all the Presto servers that I have permission for, and, and, the, and allows me to pick the apps that I want, either okay. individuals or or dashboard. So people are asking so uh, about what's happening right here. This is an app gallery which is considered an app store style way of delivering apps. So when you're putting this information in, nothing has actually been loaded into, into SharePoint. It's actually pulling from the Presto server somewhere that could be in your organization's data center, on the cloud, whatever your organization has it. And it's pulling all the apps that were developed and getting ready to put it onto the onto the canvas in SharePoint, right? right? So it's an app store within SharePoint, essentially what we're seeing. Yeah, exactly. So I've got uh, you know some of my favorite apps or things I want to put on this page, and they could be you know single widgets or grids or lists, or simply um, a whole dashboard. So let's pick a let's pick a just a simple uh, chart or something to show here, and on this page, and then we'll move to pulling the whole dashboard in that we right. just mashed up in our Mashboard tool. So this is one of the apps that we saw in in Mashboard, but was part of a bigger dashboard. And you're showing it as a single app right here. Right. So if I wanted to arrange this with other good things, other things I have in SharePoint, I can simply do that. Too. So if I have other web parts that are non-Presto web parts or any, I can pull those into. Everything is a web part, which means they could all be wired together right. in SharePoint, too. Right. 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 So it, it behaves well and plays well with all the great uh, SharePoint features you have now. Okay. So we go to it. Let's just go to another page that has. Um, maybe we want to just dedicate a whole page to that dashboard. We'll add a web part, and we'll simply add that um, one of the Jack the Jack the app web part as we did before, and um, we'll give it the whole space on the page. And we'll go ahead and pick the. Um, you know, maybe we'll name it. Uh, you know. Live by for our dashboard and um, you know, give it uh, as much space as we need. And it's just as simple as um, once we're, we don't even have to be in editing mode to change the application that we have, which is mm. great. Your users can pick the application that we want. We'll go back to our, our favorite. Um, Presto server, and the web part makes that connection easy and signs me in. 
So I have that and shows me apps I have permission to, to run. Right, that's another question coming in. Does everybody see everything or are they only seeing the apps that they have access to? Right, so not only are they only going to see the apps they have access to, they're only going to see the data that their uh, security entitles them to as well. Right, and that's a key point here is that even though somebody may have the right to see the app or run the app, they, there's also governance that is along the app that goes all the way back to the data sources. And this is really a key element of what we were asking before about the outside information. Uh, it, when you're working with inside SharePoint information such as list and, and SQL Server, uh, it's not too hard to do the security and have single sign-on. However, as soon as you want to do single sign-on, with SAP or PeopleSoft or other systems, it becomes quite a nightmare. And actually, we've heard many customers say that that's one of their number one problem, is they haven't figured out how to do security, a single sign-on security, when you're trying to run apps or to getting data from all these outside systems. So you'll notice here that there's no, we don't pop up login again. There's no multiple logins. Everything is happening behind the scenes. And when you're, as your user, those credentials are carried throughout the system end-to-end. -end. So that's end-to-end -end security, uh, and that's one of the key elements. If you don't have that built into the platform, it's almost impossible to try to tack that on in the end. Well, and that's a tough nut to crack, having the security that you need and also making it easy for the users so you don't run into that adoption issue by making the users log in multiple times. That's one of the things that we've seen limit SharePoint deployment. Okay, so now we're going to jump into Live Buy and see what this looks like. So you're uh, you're the call center uh, highly empowered sales rep, and Jane Seymour is on the line. So you you start with Jane Seymour and tell us what's happening here. Well, one of the things first I want to do is I want to go ahead and see some of the information about the um, about Jane Seymour and uh, just confirm I have the right person and understand what recent activity she's had. So shipments and returns. So I can see things that she's bought and things she's taken back as well. Right, right. And understand a little buying power and a little uh, of her background. So in case she asks about some things, or I can I can personalize this and make this look like I'm really familiar with her and, and develop that trust. And part of the complaint that we've heard in the past from the operators is that they just didn't know really, they didn't have any insight into the behavior of the person. They, they may have known what they've ordered, but they really didn't know what was returned or their styles of things mm -hmm. that they liked and, and, and actually didn't really have a way to look at it in real time as they were doing things. Right. Okay, so I'm looking at Jane and, and I see she has a bunch of shipments uh, and then returns that are happening here. Mm -hmm. And then from this perspective, I'm trying to see, you know, does she return everything that she buys or is she keeping mm -hmm. some of it, right? That's, that's important to see here. Uh, and it ultimately, as you know, because we've empowered you to go and, and set the pricing for. Okay, so part of this, now now that you have her information, you want to, she's looking for some stuff, right? Right, so I want to then, um, I want to see some of the things that she's interested in. Maybe she wants to, um, um, you know, she's asking about a we, and what, what sort of um, offer we can make on a we and the pricing. So I'm going to understand her buying style with some KPIs, um, and also I'm going to search on what we have and what other products besides the we, and also see what our competitors are offering. So okay, so let's see from the buying style. We know that she, she likes to buy smartphones. She bought some music players. How about her buying uh, power there? Well, and this is key. We want to see how, you know, how much business has she done. She spends a lot of money okay. in, the, in, in the past quarter with Right. She's a good customer. I want to spend the time with her and keep her coming back here. Right. So, so this is important too because you never and this takes into account the returns and everything else. And and uh, what you're trying to do is you're trying to devote more time, quite frankly, to the people who will buy more and give them more uh, interaction. And uh, so by having this information, I notice here that when you look at the Wii, she wants the Nintendo Wii and the price. But you're also you have real time insight into competitors' information and social deals that are going on. Tell me about that. Well, this, the competitor information is obviously scraping that from competitors' websites, so that app can go out and get data totally outside our organization, but make it available to me, so I can I can see what competition I have and how I'm priced. Maybe I want to discount below Amazon in this case. 
I can see some of the real temporal or short-term social deals that she might be seeing in Twitter. And I can also see other items that are similar. I might want to upsell her to the new uh, Xbox 360 Slim. And, 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 you know, maybe she'll enjoy that more and, uh, and we'll get more revenue. And, and, we've, and part of this was that the, the younger customers were coming in and saying, well, you know, what's your price and I want to buy, but then knowing full well that there's, there's special deals that were going on. So by giving the sales uh, consultant the information about, the, about the, the current deals, and this is pulling real time, right, real time searching from Twitter and mm -hmm. any other type of social media, then you can preempt some of those things and even even see if some of those deals are actually real and dig into it. So this is a lot of information that uh, is was literally impossible to have in front of you uh, as the person was calling in. So this is plugged all into the real-time information, is that correct? Right, so this is live and connected up to the minute and doing that scraping behind the scenes with, for the Twitter and the social deals, um, Facebook offers, and also hitting those competitor websites so that the, as, a, as an operator, I'm trying to talk to, to a customer and, and relate to them. I don't have to be going out to different websites and clicking and dragging all the time and making them wait on the phone a long time. I can get them the answers they need right away. So if I, if I also want other information such as what's, what are my customers buying today, what's trending, what's the hot items, what are the new reports, that's yet another factor of connecting into the source of information, maybe mashing it up and producing an app, and I can just pull that app in here once it's available, is that right? Right, so any of those things would be able to just add it very quickly with that drag and drop mashboard tool we showed, and it'll, um, it'll show up here. Okay, great, thanks, John, that's great. Okay, so hopefully that gives you some insight in the speed. Everything you're seeing here is actually live, and these are live dashboards. Uh, John's pulling things out live, he's connecting into the live sources, uh, to show you, you know, how real it is, that's, that's what we want to do. So network latency, everything else is a factor in here, and being able to have this as responsive as you're seeing it is, is the key. So we want to show you the real thing here. Okay, so let's, um, now that you've seen that, and uh, let's go back and, uh, and just finish up the uh, presentation and also answer some questions about this. Um, I'm going to answer one question now because this is, uh, uh, it's asking about, well, how, what type of capability do you have if, uh, if you want to have a developer to become productive in this? And, um, and part of what the platform provides, and this is something for you to look at whenever you're looking at a, uh, a real-time dashboard provider, is that you want to be able to have out-of-the-box point-and-click type visualization and creation. Everything you're seeing here uh, was created point-and-click in our platform it, with the exception of one app that was created to be a little more custom. Now as a developer, if you want to engage your developer, you really just need to be a JavaScript or HTML5 developer. So the questions coming on are, you know, how long does it really take for a developer to become productive and using this platform? How long does it take for somebody to get up to speed? I mean, we've seen, if you're a, if you're a, uh, a well-versed JavaScript HTML5 developer, you, you could become productive in a few days, quite frankly. We have a, uh, a power user training class that's two days and a developer training class that's three days. And, uh, and that's really going soup to nuts. But we've seen some developers, we've even had interns who have been able to develop apps in just a matter of days with having no experience in Presto. So it does really get you a lot farther, a lot faster. And that's because we, we take out all the infrastructure things that you have to worry about, provisioning and security and governance, and really let you focus on what you're trying to deliver. Okay, so here's an example. I want to give you some examples so it, it may resonate with the types of problems you're working on. Uh, NASA had a problem where uh, they were working on their data consolidation, and, um, and they had to comply with their fact that data center costs were reduced by 40%. So you think about the types of solutions operational intelligence uh, problems solve is that it's, um, it's about data that's always on the move and information's changing. Well, that could be in all different types of domains. Well, NASA wanted, had 80 data centers and needed a way to track all this data center metrics about the consolidation. They, they needed to understand information about the data centers, the things that were moving and being consolidated, on what systems were up, what systems were being moved. And as you can imagine, just like anything else, this data was always changing, so it couldn't, literally couldn't be in one place. 
So they created an operational dashboard to show not only the information such as the server counts and OS counts and things like that from infrastructure, but they had the KPI metrics because they were being uh, gauged on and measured on how well they were doing, how fast things were being uh, moved and redeployed and condensed. So now they're able to use a dashboard to understand all the assets and, expense, and expenses associated with it. And as you can see that they were impressed by how fast and easy it was to create the dashboards and customize it and to get down and see the information that they needed. And they knew that this would be a much more cost-effective way of doing it than bringing in another tool or trying to do this by hand. Here's another area, completely different, uh, Qualcomm doing real-time quality management. So they looked at uh, how, were, how are they able to get quality as a, a form of process and information that was spread across many, many different systems. And those many systems were getting, as you can imagine, when they're developing chips and developing um, hardware, that they need to have many, many, sometimes thousands of people testing information. And all that information could be you know, short tests, extremely uh, extensive tests, but it was they were unable to go and find a way and to aggregate the information. Matter of fact, they tried to aggregate it in one place. So instead of aggregating it, uh, they used Presto to be able to connect into the systems of record or the sources of information and mash it up and give you the dashboards. And they really were impressed with the uh, the concept of an app store, where they wanted to have these apps that were available to people doing testing so that not only can they report out the information on the on the um, quality, but they can have made this available as apps and build dashboards. And they could do these things in a week versus months of trying to do it in Cognos or TIPCO, which are more of your traditional ways of doing it. And then next is a, uh, is a bank, uh, Banamex, where they wanted insight into how the branches are performing. So yet another completely different type of application where the information was being captured about their customers moving through the bank, and they were also capturing information on how long the transactions were taking at the counters. And what they wanted to do was monitor this not only within the, each individual bank, but they wanted to monitor across the whole country, across all the banks, and they wanted to have dashboards that were showing the operational performance. So they created a, a business command center uh, with real-time information for the dynamic analysis of all the moving parts that they had. And they were pulling information from legacy systems, databases, BI data, Excel, you name it. It was all being pulled together, and they wanted a single point of access to be able to see this information. So they're able to build this dashboard very quickly, uh, Point Connect, and 80% of the dashboard was assembled in two days. And uh, the remaining percent of the work was really the customization that took an extra four. And some people may say, well, why does that 20% take four more days? Well, a lot of this is being presented to a large number of people. So much of it is about the aesthetics, about the presentation. And of course, as people see information, they want more information. They want it customized. And all this is drilled down and connectable and you can completely shareable with others in the organization. Okay, so I want to uh, answer a few questions. And, uh, and some people were talking about, well, what type of experience do you need to have if you're, right, if you're building this in SharePoint? Do you need to be a SharePoint developer? Well, no, you don't. And, and this is one of the key design tenants. If you are actually developing these apps, as John is showing you there, John's, uh, John O'Brien is not a SharePoint developer. He's not building custom web parts. What he's doing is he's assembling these dashboards. And if he were to build a custom dashboard with, say, uh, HTML5, that, that, that app would be developed and registered or published into Presto. And then it, that would be able to be pulled up as a native web part in SharePoint. This is the key component here is that we don't believe that SharePoint will be the only place that you will be running these dashboards and applications, that where you run them may be in a tablet when you get off the plane, or it may be on your smartphone, or it may be in your, in your portal where you just want to see some of these apps that are running. This means you don't have to be a specialized developer that actually uh, uh, understands the technology required for each platform, because that's a huge cost impact. The idea is to use standards such as JavaScript, HTML5, 
and platforms so that whatever you develop is in fact portable to those platforms. So we're just about out of time here. I want to hand it back over to Jess and uh, she's going to tell you what's the next steps and what you can do to learn more about Presto and about our SharePoint add-on. Okay, great. Thank you to both John. You guys did a great job in today's presentation and then the demo as well. Um, just as a follow-up for everybody that's on the line, um, we do offer a free trial edition of our Presto software as well as our SharePoint add-on. You can find that um, free trial edition at jackie.com slash dev, which is what we call our Mashup Developer Community. And there you can find not only the free edition of the software, but also resources to help support your learning and your experience around the product. Um, you can also visit jackie.com slash SharePoint for additional information on some of the differentiators that we talked about related to the product. Um, so thanks again today for um, your guys' participation, and we look forward to seeing you guys at a future event soon. Thanks a lot.